Get up to rock, get up to burn, stand with the pride and burn for your desire. gentlemen welcome to the mid-atlantic modeling league spike magazine trophy it's week number five and we're in division b tonight let me tell you something if you don't live in the mid-atlantic let me tell you what you're missing you my friend are missing tasty cakes not only are you missing tasty cakes you are missing the tasty cake lemon jr absolutely delicious but you know what you're not missing in the mid-atlantic tonight you're not gonna miss donkey teeth versus arendelle icebreakers dead fred versus chime wood elves versus norse let's take a look at the standings over in division a clivius remains on top the knights of nuffle the brett team three one and oh one of two undefeated teams in division a in second place the damaged dragons coached by war horseman a lizard team 3-0-1 is their record and in third place skitter twitch die die escaping team coached by berserker tempest 2-2-0 the second undefeated team tonight we're in division b the dinner bell darlings continue to be in first place 5-0-0 they've guaranteed their spot in the semi-finals it's only week five but they're making it they're making the cut in second place the double dippers coached by sweet bunny and necro team three one and one is their record in third place the friendly neighbor kaiju coached by america lizard team two one and two is their record up tonight are the number four and number fifth team number four and number fifth number four and number five teams the arendelle icebreakers and donkey teeth two one and one is their record each arendelle icebreakers are ahead by two tds First up, we'll take a look at Donkey Teeth. They're coming in a TV of 1,400 this evening, and you can see they are beat up, battered, and bruised. I think they have a 10-player 10, 10 roster. Let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Indeed, a 10-player roster. They're going to have to pick up a journeyman lineman that's going to bring their effective TV up to 1,470 for the evening. Hingle McCringleberry, a ward answer. He's level three. He's picked up strip ball and an extra point of strength. Look at Jack Marius Tactheratrix, the number two ward answer. Holy moly, level four, a blodger naturally. You have uh, you have the uh, the leap, of course you do. Sidestep, tackle, and an extra point of agility. You thought agility, AG4 was bad? Man, I'm, I'm offended. <laughs> the kicker will be out this week. Uh, Osmataz Buckshank is injured. Triple Parakeet Shoes continues to stay on the roster with Wrestle. Stumptavian Roboclip has Wrestle, uh, Roboclick has wrestle as well grunky peep quackadilly blip and equine ducklings three catchers on the roster two of which have leveled up one has the guard skill one has block biscuitine trisket has yet to level up tonight we'll talk about what that level up might be in just a second but that's going to bring the tv up even further by another 20 to 50 points three tr or 20 to 50 000 gold i should say three trr one apothecary five fan factor up tonight as their opponents are the Arendelle Icebreakers. They're coming in at a TV of 1040. However, they are also pretty beaten up here with a nine player roster. They're going to have to pick up two journeymen. That'll bring their effective TV up to 1140. So the differential here is going to be uh, 330K ish. Um, and well, before the level up. So it'll be around 350 to 380. Uh, and we'll see what, uh, what Dead Fred rolls there and what he selects. But 
There's a Yeti on this roster. The Yeti has Claw. Claw's not going to be in effect tonight. He does have Frenzy, however. Frenzy will very much be in effect, as will Disturbing Presence. Lots and lots and lots of block. Lots and lots and lots of Frenzy. We saw Chime uh, use Frenzy to good effect in earlier weeks. He's got Kristoff, the Muddy Blow player. That will be an, a fantastic piece tonight up against these what else the duke of wesselton is the runner on this roster he has leveled up and picked up sure hands two team rerolls one apothecary three fan factor how do the two teams play tonight well if we look at donkey teeth here they're gonna do what what elves do they're gonna score whenever they want those two war dancers are an absolute menace uh wrestle is great on the linemen to uh, allow them to take blocks whilst uh, not having to go through that armor roll. You can see AV of seven is not very good. Lots of fragile players on the pitch this evening. These are two teams that are defined by having uh, a majority of AV seven players. He does have uh, three catchers. We haven't seen Dead Fred really threaten the passing game at all in this competition. In fact, not so much at all in this season. He might do it tonight with three catchers on the roster. Biscuitine Triscuit still needs to level up. What might he pick? Uh, man, I, you know what? If I had a tree man that was about to level up, I think guard would be a good pick. I think grab might be a good pick. Grab allows you to, to when you take a block, it, it's basically the inverse sidestep. You get to pick them up and put them somewhere adjacent to you. So instead of pushing someone away with your measly MA of two, uh, you keep them right next to you until you until you break them in half. <laughs> so, uh, and you have a huge strength of six. I think grab would be a good pickup as well. Um, Mighty Blow uh, is a factor, but with the Treyman being so slow, you don't really get to, to too many Mighty Blows on, on players that matter so much. But this Treyman, uh, of course, with that strength of six, can exert uh, uh, pitch control. He'll uh, be controlling nine spaces on the pitch. Where he ends up um, might betray where Donkey Teeth wants to run or indeed pass this ball. Uh, against the Norse team, honestly, I think against a Norse team, even though you're, both teams are very fragile, um, with two Wolf Werners at strength four, you have the Yeti at strength five, and most players uh, having block, I think you treat this like a bashy team, right? I, I think you don't want to go toe to toe with the Icebreakers. I don't think you want to give up. You might get a two die block. I don't think you want to give up the two die block back simply because they have so much block. Uh, the advantage or, or the die rolls are much more in their favor with the block than they are in yours. I think Donkey Teeth on defense, they're gonna back off. They're gonna hold this team to a blitz and uh, try to keep their players alive for the drive that they're on defense. Mighty Blow can be, play a huge factor for Chime tonight. That's on a frenzy player. So he can get, uh, you know, four, if he gets really lucky, six block dice on, on a player and the knockdown's gonna have Mighty Blow, that's huge. The Yeti has Frenzy as well. Claw not gonna be in effect, uh, unless against the, the Tree Man, of course. Claw means you treat your opponent's AV as if it were a seven, but Disturbing Presence is huge against a Wood Elf team. Disturbing Presence is going to impact the passing game, and the player with Disturbing Presence doesn't even need to be standing. He just needs to be on the pitch. He covers a lot of space. I believe it's, uh, what is it, three in any direction? That's gonna make it seven spaces. Yeah, three in any direction. So seven spaces, uh, seven spaces square is what he's going to cover with disturbing pre presence. That's a huge amount of pitch that you're going to make passes that much harder. Uh, we'll see where he wants to put that Yeti. Of course, being the big guy, being a wild animal, it's going to be tricky to position him without blocking or blitzing. But if he can get them, if he can get the Yeti in between the catcher and the passer, that's going to be big for the Arendelle Icebreakers. They're down a measly two, or they only have a measly two team rerolls. That's gonna be a big problem for them tonight. Uh, I believe we'll see Dead Fred leverage his big skills. He'll leverage those war answers to try uh, try a little bit of reroll control, right? Trying to put the Arendelle Icebreakers in a situation where they have to roll more dice, or maybe perhaps want to roll dice that they wouldn't otherwise want to roll. If you can bring them down to one TRR, that's a big, big advantage. And of course, if you can bring them down to none, that's huge. Uh, We'll, we'll we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about the inducements in just a sec. Let's see if the coaches are ready to go. All right, I don't see anybody in Discord, but that's fine. We'll queue this up. 
So while we wait for the coaches to uh, come together, 330 to 380K is going to be going to the Arendelle Icebreakers. How do you spend that? Well, normally you'll hear me say things like, oh, Wizard's not a bad pick. Maybe you pick up a bribe or a this or a that. Man, I think tonight, so the Norse have access to Zara, Zara the Slayer. Zara is a strength four player. She has block, she has dauntless, she has dodge, she has jump up, but you know what she has above all of that? She has stab. Stab, I think, would be a huge boon to this team, especially against these war dancers. I personally would love to see Zara. Zara comes in at 270K and then maybe dip into his treasury. He's got money in his treasury. Uh, pick up that third reroll. He's going to need it. Uh, that's what I would do if I were the Arendelle Icebreakers. Doug the Minotaur says uh, Wilhelm Cheney and a wizard instead. Wilhelm Cheney would come up to 240. Uh, getting the wizard would bring it up to 390. Not a bad pick. Wilhelm Cheney, not a bad player at all. That's a uh, uh, frenzy claw. Uh, claw won't be a factor, but uh, I believe he has catch. He has strength of four, which is really good. He's a he's a werewolf. Um, what else is he? Uh, wrestle. He has wrestle as well. Uh, not a bad pickup. Wilhelm Cheney, Cheney uh, a very good uh, star player. Uh, he also has access to a loony. He has access to a helmet. He can pick up a chainsaw player for a measly 110k if he wants. Uh, loonies, of course, are secret weapons. They're only going to be on the pitch for a drive. He can make that longer with a bribe or two. Um, that might be an option. Just trying to, to murder Wood Elves ASAP. Uh, but personally, I would love to see Zara. I'd love to see a Zara pickup. I think if Zara has any place, it's in this match right now. Uh, so now, of course, if he picks up Zara, uh, Dead Fred's going to obviously understand what's going on, and he's going to try to protect his players from Zara. He will probably Zara will probably have a target on her back, uh, and, and he'll he'll go strong at Zara, and try to take her off the pitch. Which is still, uh, still not ready, it looks like. Ah, there they are. They are in Discord and ready to go. So the induce inducement phase is uh, more than likely underway. Hank the Ranger says, Dear sweet Lord Baby Nuffle, please let there be back-to-back -back sweltering heat games. We ask this in your name. Praise Nuffle. Praise Nuffle. dying to see what Chime picks up for his inducements. I, uh, come on, come on, Zara. Come on, not just come on, Zara, but I want Zara to murder a, a war dancer. <laughs> that's what I, that's what I want. SP Beaver says sweltering heat was brutal. Yeah, sweltering heat is, uh, uh, it, especially when you get it, when the game begins, man. Now your whole game changes, right? Because now you, you really don't want to tempt fate. You don't want to tempt Nuffle uh, with those sweltering heat rolls. And it becomes it, it becomes so difficult to gauge because now you're like, oh, well, typically I want to score here or maybe I want to stall and score there. But now with sweltering heat, what do I want to do? Do I even want to attempt that? Do I want to risk that? Signor's Loop says, stepped away for a moment and came back to Ava praising Nuffle, which is right and correct, of course. Indeed. <laughs> All right, the game's underway. We'll see what Chime picked up in the inducement phase. Zara, 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 Zara. Looks like Donkey Teeth will be, uh, well, no Zara. But he did pick up a wizard, a wizard and a bribe. Let's go, baby. A wizard and a bribe is what Chime picked up. What, uh, plus one fame advantage to Donkey Teeth. They'll be setting up on defense to start this game. Currently screening out the entire pitch. Three players on the line, one of which, of course, is Biscuitine Tr Trisket. What did he pick up on Trisket? Yeah, he picked up a grab. I think that's a great call. Hank the Ranger asks, what skill did the tree take? Grab. Grab's going to allow that uh, tree man to just take a block and 
keep that, that opposing player right there. In fact, he can even pull him out of position very, very easily. Very good pickup by Dad Fred. You can see the two war dancers. One is protected over on the right side of the pitch. One is uh, in the second row here on the left side of the pitch, in the left wide zone. That would be old Hingle McCringleberry himself. SP Beaver says, can you use grab to throw someone off the pitch? No. Five man offensive line for the Arendelle Icebreakers. We've got the Yeti going toe to toe with the treatment. They might try to Block down the treatment here on their uh, line blocks. They do have a journeyman on the line though. They're gonna have to be a little careful of that. They probably won't take the block of the journeyman. Here's the kick. No kick for the donk or no kicker for the donkey teeth this evening. The icebreakers get the move one space on the quick snap. They're gonna win this uh, kickoff event. says I don't think so no did it did it not come through when I answered that I'm sorry it's not gonna pull anybody off the line here he doesn't have anybody with, with guard on the line though I don't know where he's gonna get I don't know where he's gonna get this box turn one tried to catch the ball in the hands of the Ulf winner didn't work out all Fortner only has an AG of two. That makes it a five plus catch. Signal's loop asks, can you grab multiple times with multiple block? I don't believe so. I believe you can only use this skill once, but I'm not sure. I believe that wouldn't be called grab. That's like Azuna drop. <laughs> That's pile driver. That's spitting bird kick. Moving players to protect the ball here. Good action order by the Arendelle Icebreakers. Um, st the ball is still not very well uh, protected just yet. Now he's going to take the block on the line. <laughs> Double skulls. Oh, boy, how lucky is that? Gets a stun. Quad skulls on the reroll. Uh, you got a both down result on the on the second block roll. And that's going to work out due to the block skill. I think he needs to pull a player in on this ball. It's very shallow kick by Donkey T. Yeah, that's uh, the mark is scary. Going for the blitz. Oh boy. Two die blitz. Gets a pal on Swordless Mime Town. For that 8 plus, he got it. Got a stun. Good use of the Mighty Blow Blitzer. Had to follow up due to the frenzy skill. Ball still not safe. Two die block on Stumptavian Roboclip. Gets the. I'm going to call him Roboclip. <laughs> All night. Looks like he's going for the ball pickup, or he might just be trying to cage up. Pick the ball up. Good pickup. Might need to pull in one space to the left. Let's see. He's going to go one space to the right. All right, we'll see if uh, Ol Hingle will uh, leave him alone. <laughs> Two dive lock on the line, gets a pal against Biscatine Triscuit. He's going to stand firm and get knocked down. Only having a strength of two means that to stand back up, he has to roll a die. 
Uh, yes, roll a d6. Oh my goodness! First thing he has to do, of course, is roll take root. Fails the roll, and <laughs> this Kinti just get, is going to stay in place for most of this drive. Now I, I hear what you're saying, but Ava, isn't that terrible? And I say no, because the drive is probably going to stay around here for most of the drive. It's probably going to stay around settle, center pitch for at least a quarter. So he's still in it. Um, if he can leverage grab, that's even better. Uh, but uh, anyway, he failed his take root roll. And because he only has an MA of two, it costs three MA to stand up. He doesn't have it. So he has to roll a D6 on a four plus. He's able to stand up. Failed that roll as well. He's going to remain on the ground. <laughs> SP Beaver says 110% of the league voted that the treatment was the best unit. And it still is the best piece. <laughs> best big guy, anyway. Two die block on Lieutenant Matias with Hingle McCringleberry doesn't go for the leap blitz on the Duke of uh, Wesselton. Remember, Hingle McCringleberry does have a strength of four. Clary says, I absolutely 100%, and this is very true, support treatment is the best piece in the game. Oh, that's good to know. Thank you, Clarithus. Under a minute to go in turn number one. Donkey Teeth playing it safe here on defense. They're not really up against a passing team. They don't have to worry too much about the pass. Um, the pass is still an option, of course. Um, but you're probably if there's going to be a pass by a North team, it's probably not going to be any any longer than a a short pass. Five is thank you for the bits. Oh, you're going to have to excuse me. I'm going to eat a piece of this cake. Mm, man, oh man. Nobody bakes a cake. Wait, nobody bakes a cake as tasty as a tasty cake. Yeah. Defense is going to shift over to the right side of the pitch. Blitz by the second uh, uh, war dancer. This is Jack Marius Tech Theratrix. One die blitz. Both standing result. He will two plus dodge away to safety. Turn two by the icebreakers. You don't know, maybe that's a lemon tree man. Yet he tramples down pitch. He takes a mark against triple parakeet shoes. Life is S. Is that actually how it's spelled? No, it's a uh, tasty T A S T Y and then K A K E. You were, you were close. Lots of Northmen currently hovering around the down Treeman. Two players across the line of scrimmage over on the left side of the pitch. Three on the right. Yeah. Clive says, foul the tree to send a message. Nah, I'd just say, get away from the tree. <laughs> just <laughs> leave the tree alone. Oh my goodness. Oh, 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 oh. A three plus handoff failed. It has to re-roll it. Failed it again. Oh my goodness. Oh man. Went for the three plus handoff. Failed it. Spent the re-roll and the ball just played hot potato all the way down the pitch. And now the ball 
It's going to almost certainly be in the hands of Donkey Teeth. He's looking to get some extra yardage out of this turn. It didn't work out. Three plus handoff is risky. Especially so close to opposing players. Failed stand up by Biscatine Triscuit. <laughs> Hank the Ranger says that's one of the longest bobbles I've ever seen. Clifey says, man, it went about a billion spaces. Yeah, the ball was intended to go one space back so that it could shuffle, I, I presume, to the left. But instead, it went three spaces forward. Good two plus pickup by the level four war dancer. Hey. Ball in the hand of Donkey Teeth. It'll move back to the 10 yard line. The old Hingle Blitz. Two die Blitz gets a push. I imagine he'll follow up. No, he doesn't follow up. He was afraid of the mighty blow block. I think it's fair enough. Hank the Ranger says, gotta watch that wizard. SP Beaver says he's going with a wide spacing to avoid the fireball. Indeed. The wizard can also cast a lightning bolt, but uh, if the icebreakers aren't able to capitalize on it, it could be a waste, waste of a spell. So we won't, uh, <laughs> we won't see it. Look at this cage. That's just, that's just a cube of elves. Hank Ranger says can still catch five with a fireball. He could. He could fireball right uh, right here. Tried to reposition the Yeti because he's a wild animal. If he's uh, blocking or blitzing, he has to roll a d6 and get a two plus to continue with his action. Otherwise, he needs a four plus. Failed the uh, four plus, tried to reposition with the Yeti. He'll stay put. Still has his tackles on stuff. Oh, that cake was delicious. Tasty cake, hire me. I'll put your logo everywhere. We'll just stare at your logo for two hours. It'll be brilliant. We'll become the Mid-Atlantic Tasty Cake League. Sponsored by Tasty Cake. Two die block out of push. Frenzy follow up. It's going to be another dodge push here. I'll name every one of my players after a, a Tasty Cake product Chocolate Creamy, Lemon Junior. Oh, the classic, the crimpet, the butterscotch crimpet. Let's go. He did mark the ball carrier, um, but it's a two plus dodge for Jack Marius Tech Tech Theratrix. Yeah. See, disturbing presence. This is what this uh, glowing square is here, and that had an effect 
on that uh, that ball bounce on the failed handoff. That's the turn. Turn three for Donkey Teeth. Triscuitin, Triscuit, he's going to stand up and finds himself next to a runner and a lineman. An opposing runner and a lineman. Sigmar's loop says Tasty Cake versus Little Debbie. Tasty Cake wins 3 0. Tasty Cake wins 4 0. Tasty Cake tables Little Debbie. Little Debbie, all 11 players injured. Dude, I angle blitz. It's a post on Citroen, the number eight Ulf Werner. Won't follow up here. We'll continue to move Hingle McPringleberry. <laughs> SP Beaver says he's too much of a coward to follow up. <laughs> Donkey Teeth shifting his team to the left side of the pitch. He's going to try to, to zoom down the left wide zone. He's going to need to get some players in between the ball carrier and the defense. One of those players is Grunky Peep, the number 11 catcher. Takes a mark on Marshmallow the Yeti, this time with Equine Ducklings, the number 13 catcher. Interesting position in here. Stumptavian Robopick. I would have put him on the right side. Maybe he has somebody else going in. GFI with Quackadilly Blip, maybe? Shifting most of this team over the left side of the pitch. But there's a big <laughs> there's a big hole towards the war dancer. It'll just take a dodge. Unless he can get the block on Stumtavian on uh not Stumtavian, on uh Biscuitine Triscuit. Does he have movement with him to get in there? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh that's two GFIs to blitz. But he says take an uphill block on the dancer. That's not the strength four dancer, that's the strength three dancer. I would absolutely take a, a one die block if I had it. Yeah, it'd be a skilled die, but the war dancer has block as well. I guess the risk is with the one die block that he has he has sidestep. I block, breaks armor, gets a stun on old... Yeah, on old nobody, on the old journeyman. <laughs> Takes the two-die Dauntless Bach against Biscatine Triscuit. Well done. Well done. Go for the blitz? I don't know. I don't know what else you do. I mean, Grunky Peep's only a catcher. Maybe you do just bring Hans in, like, here. Oh, no, he's got Frenzy. Maybe you bring Hans... Oh, man. Looks like he's going to blitz Grunky Peep, maybe. Maybe. 
Levy said, he, now he's not rooted anymore. Indeed, taking the block on the Treeman, um, when he gets knocked down, uh, he's no longer rooted. So now he'll be able to, he has to, to roll take root again. And uh, if he succeeds on the take root roll, he'll no longer be rooted. Wolf Werner Blitz is going to have to be careful of the follow-up. Two die Blitz. <laughs> he doesn't need it. Got the pal. Where's the ball going to scatter? Oh. Into the hands of the Ulf Werner. Well done. Two die Blitz with Marshmallow of Yeti. He has Frenzy. Got the push on the first Blitz. Oh, not Blitz. Block. Push on the first block. Follow-up's going to be a dodge push. That had to be a six, right? Yeah, that was a six plus to catch that ball. Ball's in the hands of a strength four player currently. Can very easily be a two-die block against the Ulf Werner. He doesn't have the block skill. Doesn't have dodge. He passes the take root roll and passes the stand up roll and now is back in this drive. Did hey! I block on Marshmallow? This would be a push. Spends the re roll. Oh no. Oh, he has Wrestle. That's fine. <laughs> Spit the reroll. Got the knockdown on the Yeti. Yeti's going to be down to 2 MA for the next turn. Sweet Bunny said no reason to reroll that. Yeah. Not sure what the plan was there. I guess he was just really afraid of the Yeti, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure why. Or wanted to free up players, but he could take. I, I, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I guess he wanted Triple Parakeet Shoes to stay standing. Took the block on the ball carrier. Failed catch due to Disturbing Presence. Would have been a 2 plus. Disturbing Presence made it a 3 plus. We'll get a 2 plus pickup with Quackadilly Blip. Or really, whomever he wants. Might put it in the hands of uh, Hingle McCringleberry. Needs to secure the ball, though. Probably see a dodge by Grunky Pete. Good dodge by Grunky, but a failed pickup is going to result in Jack Marius Tech Theratrix picking up the ball. <laughs> Turn five for the icebreaker. Second quarter begins. Remember, the Icebreakers still have a wizard. If it seems like that, uh, if it seems the Icebreakers are not going to be able to stop the... Oh, they're going to spend it right now. One, two. Two down and an injury on Stumptavian RoboClick. He's going to have a, a groin straight three down. Well done. Oh, <laughs> got three of the four players down. He still had to roll for the Ulf Werner, though, didn't he? Oh, I guess. Hmm. I guess not. Oh, the Ulf Werner was down. Knocks three down, gets a stun and an injury on the fireball. The ball's going to be in the hands of Grunky Peep. That's a two plus dodge coming up. A two plus dodge, a two plus blitz coming up, but he's got to capitalize on this fireball. Two die blitz gets the pow. Oh, push it onto the sideline. Where's the ball going to scatter? 
into the hands of Hans the Berserker. Well done. The icebreakers are indeed able to capitalize on this uh, on this fireball, but uh, they've got Swordless Mime Town close by. Fifty-fifty catch worked out. Pushed onto the sideline. It was whoa, an uphill block on the treeman. It's gonna be a push. I would have, I probably would have dodged him out and left the journeyman inside the treeman. Sends a player down pitch, Kristoff the Berserker. Is he, is he a receiver? <laughs> He's got mighty blow, he needs to start punching people. Turn five for Donkey Teeth. It's true, if he's a receiver, he's going the wrong way. That's a good call. <laughs> I just figure... Uh, I, I, I don't know, man, I'm fishing. <laughs> I'm fishing, but I figure maybe the ball swinging out here to here, but then nobody's there to protect it. Good dodge by old Grunky. SP Beaver says, does he have time to make that play? Uh, I I don't think so, but I don't even I don't even think it's a good play. I don't think he wants to do that. Hingle Blitz got the pal on Citrone. Gets the knockdown. Has plenty of movement left with Hingle McCringleberry. 4 MA. A Blitz is one of a handful of once per turn actions. One of your players may Blitz in a turn. And a blitz is basically a block and a move action all rolled up into one. Except that your block is going to cost one point of movement. But you may move before and after the blitz. You can even spend a GFI on a blitz. Jedi block gets the push on Sven the Ulfwerner. I would be very surprised if Biscatine Triscuit doesn't block the Duke of Wesselton and stick him over here, or like over here. Chain push. Jack Marius is going to sidestep uh, into the backfield. Or downfield, I suppose. <laughs> Lots of elves in place to get a block on an elf wear now. But now there's a potential hole that's opened up at mid pitch. We'll see if Chime takes advantage of it. Final block with Biscatine. Doesn't take the block with Biscatine. Doesn't want to risk Biscatine being rooted or, or getting knocked down. I would 1000% go after the journeyman here. A 
Looks like he's not going to go after the journeyman. He's marking Swordless Mime Town. He's on the front right corner of the ball carrier currently. Not Mark. He's two spaces away. Stand up blitz. It's going to get the knockdown here. Was really hoping to get the follow up so he didn't have to dodge out of the way. Gets a KO. Well done. What's the player advantage? Two man player advantage for the icebreakers. He's going to move this ball down pitch. Sets up a, a line of protection here, but remember the war dancers have leap. They have leap and they have an MA of eight. And Hingle McCrinkleberry here, you can bet he has strip ball. The ball carrier will end up on the right side of this protective line. Wow. Takes a mark on Grunky Pete. Wow. Duke Wesselton's going to get into this game. He's going to move. I'm sorry, Kristoff, the Berserker, is going to move down pitch. Duke Wesselton's over here. Gets, some, uh, gets the ball carrier over to the right of this protective line. GFI is moving one space further away. Did I Dauntless block? It's a push on Biscuitine Trisket. He'll push him across the line. Yeah. <laughs> I keep forgetting the trees have stand firm. Of course they have stand firm. They're trees. I I honestly I understand the Ooh, big stun here against the journeyman. I understand. Uh or not a stun, a KO even. One man player advantage for the icebreakers. I understand taking the block with Dauntless against the tree, but I don't think the blocks are worth it against the tree. I think you just leave the tree alone. Keep him marked with that. Well, journeyman's gone now. Keep him marked with the journeyman. Uh, he's not going anywhere. Even if he blows up the journeyman. 2MA, what's he doing? What's he doing? SP Beaver says, even without being rooted, he has yet to move at all. Yes, and look, it's turn six. And the play is still at mid pitch. I'm telling you, the trees are awesome. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't think there's any any need to have uh, continued to engage this tree here. Good dodge to get a player in front of the ball carrier, but uh, it's going to be another dodge here. Doggy Teeth down to two rerolls for the half. Hank the Ranger says he's marking two players and knocks someone out. Tree MVP of the league. <laughs> yes, sir. Two GFIs to get players back into position in front of the ball carrier. He's still not quite in scoring position. I would have moved him one space further just to threaten that score. Um, but he's not going to be able to score on turn seven. <laughs> MV tree. Lots of dodges in store for Donkey Teeth. This is, this is a, uh, oh boy. Takes a two-die blitz on Lieutenant Matias. He's going to get a push out of this unless he spends a reroll. I talked about how Donkey Teeth should, in my opinion, treat this Norse team as a Bastion team. Uh, by the same token, I think the Norse team should should act a little more like a Bastion team against this this Elf team. Uh, going for those marks, going for those those blocks. Um, and force Doggy Teeth to, to burn through a few rerolls. Clive says, Oh, I see. If SP Beaver makes a terrible pun, you read it. 
I see how it is. What pun? No, that's in the league rules. Reread the league rules. MV Tree is an actual. <laughs> it's an actual. It's an actual honorific. <laughs> Lots and lots and lots of dodges. There you go. You're gonna fail one of them. And just like that, Dockateeth's down to one reroll. Where do you go? Do you go after Equine Ducklings? Do you go after Hingle McCringleberry? Turn seven, the Arendelle Icebreaker's taking a bunch of marks in the left wide zone, but it's on the wrong side of the pitch. Today block gets a great stun on JR Jr.'s Jr. Jr. He'll be out uh, effectively for the rest of the half, but needs to open up a hole here. He's got to end this turn in scoring position. Oof, 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 oof. Looks like he's gonna blitz maybe Equine Ducklings. Here it is. Mighty Blow Blitz. No! Blitz Triple Parakeet Shoes. Oh no, Triple Parakeet Shoes has the wrestle skill. So now there's not going to be a hole opened here. I mean, he could scoot this way, I guess. But where are you going to go from there? Eight high block gets a push on the first block. He's gonna get the knockdown. Breaks armor. Gets a stun on Quack the Daily Blip. SP Beaver says there is what a, a hole off the left. Like, like he can go this way, but that's all of his movement. Yeah, yeah, that's all of his movement. GFI has to move forward. It's just gonna take a, it's just gonna take a, a couple of columns here. Uh, I mean, all three columns. <laughs> you know what? You stun a tree, you get a point. <laughs> Dog and Heath are going to be able to just set up three columns right in front of this ball carrier, and he's going to have nowhere to go. <laughs> Clive is SP Beaver. Thank you for the bits. Turn seven for Donkey Teeth. I think you just set up your defense. You can get two players here, two players here, two players here. And then where does the ball car carrier go from there? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nowhere. He goes nowhere. Good dodge. Oh, he's gonna take a mark. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. All right, well, there's one sort of column, but not really, because that's a two-die block coming back on Equine Duckling. Each team with one reroll left for the half. Not enough players left to set up this defense, so he's gonna have to try. Yeah, he's gonna have to try to close in on the offense. 
but I, boy, boy, how do you do that? Three players, well, let's ignore the dream, and two players stunned. Leap Blitz, that's what's going on. Good leap. One die Blitz. It's gonna be a both standing result unless he spins the reroll. He does. Good dodge out. <laughs> you can dodge, but you can't GFI, buddy. <laughs> Turn eight for the icebreakers. They can block. They can. They have a bunch of options. They can block equine. Do oh no! <laughs> Why? <laughs> Don't block him. <laughs> I'd block equine ducklings, take the blitz on Grecky Peep. These are both strength two players. They don't have the block skill. You got two players with frenzy. You can frenzy into the end zone. <laughs> ah <-ha! laughs> oh man. Two die blitz over at mid pitch gets the pal, breaks armor. All right, but now where do you go? Blitz has been spent. There is no hole. Where do you go? A handoff to Lieutenant Matias, I guess. I think that's the only play at this point. It's going to be a three plus handoff to Lieutenant Matias. Then he can walk into the end zone. Here's the handoff. Doesn't have the reel. It worked out. The icebreakers are going to score one to zero. Well done. Oh my goodness. Whoo! That was a heart attack in the making. <laughs> the icebreakers take the lead, one to zero, in the turn eight of the first half. One turn left for Donkey Teeth. If there's a right, they can a thousand percent score and tie this ballgame up. Maybe he just really, really wanted the SVP on the on Lieutenant Matias. So is that 11 v 10? Let's see. Uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 v 10 on the pitch. One man player advantage for the Icebreakers. Neither team with a reroll remaining. Talking Teeth is hoping for a riot. If there's a riot, there's a guaranteed added turn. <laughs> SP Beaver says the tree makes a great kickoff for turn player. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I still want to see a, a tree TD. I want to see, I, I demand a tree touchdown. <laughs> Clive is speaking to someone who literally lost a game solely to try to put SPP on a specific player. Can't really say anything if that was his plan. Yeah, I, I remember that game. <laughs> I very clearly remember that game. Icebreakers screening out the pitch on defense. I think that's that's prudent. I might even uh, have given it a couple of spaces more. It's gone a little bit deeper here because nothing's going to happen if there isn't a right. But if there is, you got to be very, very careful that these wood elves don't get behind you. I mean, if you're talking to the setup, they've got it. If they want to score, they've got to put people on the line. 
13 spaces stand between the line of scrimmage and the opposing end zone. Their fastest player is an MA of 8 with two GFIs. That's an MA of 11. With only two more spaces out of it. Oh, are they setting up for a one turn? Do they have a one turn plan here? I see a little pocket. I see a little pocket before me. If he's got one, let's go. I want to see it. I want to see it. Let's go. Here's the kick. <laughs> does, that mess, does that mess everything up? I think it does. I think it does. Crunky P is stunned. <laughs> it might not. It might not. If Crunky Peep was just a, a push player, then he might be okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> Takes the blitz on the journeyman of all. Wait. Did you take the blitz on the journeyman? KO's a journeyman. Didn't go after the permanent player. Two eye block on the other journeyman gets a pal. Quick armor again gets a kill. Well done. The Alpha will, uh, will almost certainly not be spent here. Well done. A good final, final turn of the half kill. SP Beaver, thank you for the bits. Good pickup. Quick pass for SPP. Nope. Not for you, Swordless Mime Town. Not for you. That's the end of the first half. The Arendelle Icebreakers are going to be in the lead 1 to 0. Donkey Teeth are going to be on offense to start the second half. They can score whenever they want. But obviously, they don't want to score too early unless they have a plan for winning this game. KO player is going to come back on the pitch, the KO journeyman. Wait, is you the league champion? I thought that was SPB. I thought he was the league champion. He does have a tree. He has a delicious lemon tree used to make tasty cake lemon juniors. Get them at your favorite grocery store today. They come in boxes of four. They're great on a warm summer day. With a glass of iced teas that I haven't, I haven't had iced tea in ages. And by ages, I think I just mean like two months. I don't know. El Nuberino, welcome to the stream. Any injuries yet? I just got here. Yeah, a bunch. There's a there's a murder over there. And there's a strained groin over here. Three man defensive line for the icebreakers. They're going to try to screen out this offense again. Which I think is prudent. They're down to 10 players on the pitch. 10 v 10, all tied up. Biscatine Triscuit's gonna go on to the line.
Yeah, it is a loner death or a, a journeyman death, but uh, still a death. <laughs> Teeth in the five man offensive line. They'll bro uh, block down the defensive line. Both war dancers stacked in the right wide zone. The ice breakers don't have a kicker. They can get away with one receiving player. When we say get away with one receiving player, what we mean is if you stick your player here, let's see, he has an enemy of eight. He can move anywhere in here. To grab that ball. <laughs> Hank the Ranger graciously lowered the GFI failure rate from 900% to 99%. Some would call that cheating. Offensive line has changed a bit. It's now a three-man offensive line stacked on the right. Four-man line, I suppose, with a journeyman on the left. He's marked by nobody. Nine seconds left to finish setting up, and that's it. Here's the kick. Both teams are getting an extra re-roll. The Icebreakers will very much accept that. Deep kick by the Icebreakers. The ball on Donkey Teeth's 20-yard line over in the right wide zone. Turn nine about to begin. Like he says, I'm a little concerned. My cat seems scared of something under my stove. That's just a knoblar. It's fine. Ball pickup to start things off. Typically, you don't want to do that with a two plus pickup. Eh, that's, that's, that's okay. Is there a skink under your stove? Or a Saurus? Or a Chaos Beastman with claw <laughs> and mighty blow and piling on short pass to jack marius tech theratrix good pass it's going to put one spp on equine ducklings and now the ball is up on donkey teeth's own two yard line going to open up the right sideline here with a blitz not with a both standing result you're not there's the push Looks like Donkey Teeth might indeed be trying to score early and get the ball right back and score again. The wizard is off the table now. He doesn't need to worry about it. Oh, I see. The Icebreakers did get another inducement. They got uh, extra team training. That brought them up to three rerolls. Good dodge by Hingle. Well, it's going to advance to the opposing 12-yard line. Man, I had a Skaven in my house a couple of years ago, and I did not like it. I did not approve. I did. I very much won that war. <laughs> hey. I actually, I actually fired the extermination service over that because uh, they were doing nothing. I took the reins, and I think it was the very next day, maybe two days later. <laughs> it was caught. <laughs> oh, good injury on the number three lineman. Pinch nerve. That's two players that are going to miss the next game and are out for the rest of this one. One man player advantage now for Donkey Teeth. 
Yeah, tell me trees aren't great. <laughs> tell me trees aren't great. Number nine, Berserker Hans. He's going to move into the safety position along with the number seven Ulf Werner, Sven. <laughs> Sigmir Sloops says, so that's what happens when trees move. <laughs> One die block on Swordless Mimetown. Spends the reroll. Icebreaker's down to three rerolls for the game. SP Beaver, I'm telling you, man. Find yourself a place with a lemon. I'll buy you! <laughs> lemon Juniors, they're great. You know, Lemon Juniors helped me get a 1600 on the SATs and win the Super Bowl all by myself and uh, save the world from uh, from the Galactic Empire. True story. One die block on JR Jr. 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 gets the knockdown, breaks armor, gets a stun. Sagnor's Loop says, was it the Super Bowl of math? Man, I couldn't even win the Super Bowl of math. Give me a break. Two die blitz on Hingle McCringleberry. Dauntless in effect's gonna make it. Oh, I'm sorry. Dauntless makes it a one die blitz. Hingle's got a strength of four. Dauntless means that if you can get the assist and you pass the Dauntless roll, it's gonna be a two die block. Gets a push. Takes a step back. Two GFIs to pull back Lieutenant Matias to play some defense. Lieutenant Matias isn't really helping here. Finally failed to dodge. Hinkle McCringleberry can get a two die blitz very, very easily on the Duke of Wesselton. And if so, Jack Marius Tac Theratrix can waltz him to the end zone. <laughs> he does have AG5. He can go wherever he wants. I, I used to think that song was called Let It Snow. And I'm so offended that it's not called Let It Snow. Because it really should be. But it says ones do happen. Indeed, they do. Two marks by two catchers. I I have to imagine he'll he'll stand up swordless mime town. <laughs> this kid named Triscuit's gonna take root. But I have to imagine the blitz is coming up on the Duke of Wesselton. Here it is. Two die blitz. Oh, uh, the knockdown is just fine. Didn't follow up. Is he not scoring? If he's not scoring, what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> is he going to try to... What? What? I think he wants to pass to Hingle McCringleberry to get some SPP and to get Hingle... The, uh, oh, all right, so he didn't pass to get the SVP. He just wanted Hingle, Hingle McCringle Perry to get the three SVP. Fair enough. 1-1, one, one, the game's all tied up. Icebreaker's going to be back on offense here. 
Doherty thinks they can get this ball back and score to win. They're gonna have a one man. Do they have a one man player advantage? Who has the player advantage? Let's see. Three, six, nine, ten. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They do. They have a one man player advantage. Three re rolls left for the game. That's plenty. <laughs> Clippy says, oh, I see when someone else does that and makes it work, it's fine. No one else makes fun of them. It was a two plus handoff, though. <laughs> Hank the Raider says, can we make a league rule that if a word answer gets both AG5 and strict for they kicked out of the league? I think they become the new league commissioner. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> Like he says, mine was a four plus with a reroll, which is still worse odds. <laughs> hey. Oh, did it cut out when I said it's still worth odds? Worst odds, right? I'm trying to read the captions. All right, maybe it cut out. Let me let me try this again. <clears throat> <clears throat> Which is still worse odds. <laughs> that was good, right? Clive <laughs> says anything over fifty percent is a guaranteed success. That's how statistics work, man. You joke. I say it all the time, though. Like people genuinely, I don't think they think they believe this, but they do believe this. People either think that they think there's three odds, right? They think there's either. A 0% chance that something will happen, a 50-50 chance that something will happen, or a 100% chance that something will happen. There's nothing in between. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Donkey Teeth with a three man defensive line. They're giving up either wide zone. The icebreakers are going to be down a player here. They've got. Seven turns to score. Here's the kick. Another re-roll. Nuff Nuffle provides. Turn 10 for the icebreakers. Ball gets kicked onto the 12-yard line. The Duke of Wesselton will pick this ball up at the end of the turn. Two-die block to get things started on the line is going to be a push. Frenzy follow-up gets the knockdown. <laughs> El Liberino says Blood Bowl has taught me that 17% equals 900%. Truth. <laughs> to die, Mighty Blow Blitz. He'll get the knockdown on JR Jr. Jr.'s Jr. He's going to get a plus one to the armor roll or the injury roll. Doesn't work out. When you roll a three, nothing can help you. back to try to put some protection on the ball probably should have done this first in the action order just in case these rolls went awry here's the ball pick up three plus works out here's the ball forward yikes here's the ball forward Two die block on the number three the journeyman gets the knockdown, but has to follow up due to frenzy. This is the uh, the downside of frenzy, right? Is that you must follow up. You may find yourself having players pulled out of position. Takes the uphill block on the treeman. Why? <laughs> Why? Ah, 
Journeyman got injured on the uphill block. Smashed collarbone. Oh, that journeyman learned his lesson. <laughs> That's right, that, that'll teach him for being a player nobody cares about. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> the ranger says that does it. I'm buying the trees journey jersey. I want a biscuitine trisket jersey. I legitimately want a biscuitine trisket jersey. <laughs> Doug the Minotaur with the uh, with the lore. Trees have magnets in them sometimes, and people are attracted. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that majestic creature. Dude, I blocked the off way and it gets a push. Man, 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 Clavius, don't joke. Don't joke. If I... A Biscuitine Triscuit jersey would be dope. <laughs> Failed dodge by number eight. Spends the reroll here, why not? Nuffle's giving you a hundred of them. <laughs> it's this jersey's just someone nailing a piece of wood to your chest with the number 16 on it. <laughs> this jersey's just clogged gutters. Tudai Hingleblitz gets the pound, Lieutenant Matthias. Breaks armor, gets a stun. Two die block on Citrone, the old winner. You get a two die block on a strength four player, you take it. Gets the pal. I wonder why. I wonder why he pushed him away. Got the stun out of it. Guess he didn't want the stand up for the one die coming back. Coming back, possibly two dice. resets a little bit. They're going to stay in front of the ball here. Turn 11 for the Icebreakers. It's a tie game currently, 1-1. One one. SP Beaver says, have we seen a foul yet? I think I recall there being a bribe purchase. There was a bribe pur purchase. The, the Icebreakers are sitting on a bribe. They have yet to foul anybody. A bribe means if you get called off the pitch... You can hand some money to the ref. You roll a d6. So long as you don't roll a 1, the ref will accept your cash and uh, reverse the call. Ball advances to the opposing 2-yard line now. Yeah, is it, is it not? 10v7? 10 10v7? 10 Three, six, seven, eight. Ten v eight. Two man player advantage for Donkey T. Oh man, you know what comes out on Friday? Zelda. T is it Tears of the Kingdom? I don't know. New Zelda on Friday. Did I block? Frenzy follow up gets the pal on Grunky Peep. AB8, or AB7 rather, breaks armor, gets a stun.
So you can see, AV, uh, AV7 means you need to roll an 8 plus. He rolled a 7, but he had Mighty Blow. That bring, he needed, he needed the plus 1 to break armor. So the game records that as an armor break of 7 plus. And then he doesn't get the roll on the injury. If he would have gotten the roll on the injury, that would have been a KO. Or not the roll, but the uh, the plus one for Mighty Blow. Norse Cage, just across the line of scrimmage. Indeed, very good point. Clifey says both rolls were sevens, the most common outcome, which is why the weather is always so nice in this game. Indeed. Except the weather, <laughs> nice weather is four, uh, one, two, is it three through ten, I believe? But changing weather on the kickoff event table is indeed a seven. Two die leap blitz, let's go. Got the pal, he had strip ball. Push would have been sufficient as well. He's gonna knock down the Duke of Wesselton and knock the ball out of this cage. Oh no, did he fail the, oh, good dodge. Look who's, look who's waiting in the wings. Leap blitz. Got the pal. Ball was knocked out of the cage. Hey! <laughs> Takes a mark on Hans, the number nine berserker. Takes a mark on the Ulf Werner with triple parakeet shoes. Takes a mark on the ball with Swordless Mime Town. Going for the ball pickup. Three plus pickup worked out. Two plus dodge. Failed the dodge. And got stunned. That's a two plus dodge. <laughs> you can pass any roll in this game except a two plus. That one's impossible. Good action order though by, uh, oh no, double skulls, has to re-roll it. Icebreaker's down to three. Good action order by, uh, by the Wood Elf team here to get players in between the Norse players and the ball before they went for the pickup. They also got uh, a couple players in position, in position on the ball and uh, negating some of the other players with a, with a, a mark. tell you a story my lawn crew is terrible so i fired them today and then my neighbor mentioned he might want to do it so i talked to him today and i was like all right you want to you know you want to do my lawn and a long story short he was like hell i'll do it you know when it's not too hot outside really i'll only do it when it's cloudy and you know not after it rains and i was like how many how many times are you gonna like cut the lawn like what when are you going to cut the lawn weed and stuff? And he was like, ah, you know, Jake, you know, if it's, if it's not hot, I'll do it. And I was like, well, how, how much do you charge? He's like, I don't know. You know, I just, whatever. That's, this is not okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I agreed. Uh, and then immediately went and found another crew. So tomorrow I now have to have the conversation. <laughs> I'd be like, Hey man, sorry, but I've, <laughs> 
I found someone else. <laughs> it was a good run for the less than 24 hours we had this relationship, but <laughs> I'm not doing this. This is a little too wishy-washy. <laughs> I, I want a thing. You want a thing. You won't <laughs> you won't commit to giving me the thing I want. I want, and you won't tell me the thing you want. <laughs> Arendelle Icebreakers will recover the ball, and they're now they're now on their own eight yard line. So the new crew will be out this week, and they better, because it's the old crew failed to show up <laughs> two weeks in a row. Two-die block on the Yeti, he gets a push. Crab is in play. Decides to push him back like normal. <laughs> Sagnor's Leaf says, it's, it's fun when your yard returns to nature. Is it? <laughs> is it? Because I just know I'm going to get hit with a long grass fee or something. Like, it's not that long, but I just know it. Two die blitz by Hingle McCringleberry. Gets a push out of this. He has strip ball. The ball's going to bounce. Two plus dodge to a two plus pickup. Oh, that's a GFI. No, 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 Hingle, no. <laughs> oh, that's not even a two plus dodge, it's a three plus dodge. That's like Nurse Loop says, sure. Wondering if it's your dog or a will to be at the dog door. <laughs> Good Paul pickup by Jack Mary uh, Jack Marius attack Theratrix. Is that two GFIs? It was indeed two GFIs. Donkey Teeth now on the opposing 14 yard line, trying to win this game. Oh, good call, sweet bunny. Yeah, yeah, Hingle McCringleberry. Oh no, not Hingle McCringleberry. Jack Marius, he's got the AG5. All right, turn 13 for the Icebreakers. This is their final quarter to try to get this ball back and win. They started this half on offense. They've lost the ball. They need to get it back, but boy, boy, are they in quite the predicament. No blitz? Is this a blitz? Not, not in that position, it's not. <laughs> it's a push on Hingle McCringleberry. Two die follow up. It's uh, a dodge push out of this. Sweet Bunny says, should have screened instead of face with the loner. Hank the Ranger says, Norse need to leave someone free to recover the ball if it pop it loose. Here's the two die blitz on the war dancer. Didn't re roll that? It's going to go for the frenzy follow up.
Two die frenzy follow up. He's got to reroll this. It's going to be a both standing result. That's not going to do it. Boy. Jack Marius. He's just boop, 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 boop. AG5. He's going to twinkle toes away from this situation. Beaver says leap time. There's no better not leap. <laughs> Two die block gets the pow on the number three journeyman. That'll be the turn unless he takes this uphill, which I don't. I don't think he wants to do. Yeah, turn fourteen for Donkey Teeth. Anchor Ranger says 83% leap with AG5, right? It's, uh... Somebody look up leap. I thought it was just a straight 3+. plus. <laughs> oh, it is an AG roll. Yeah, good call. Good call. It's an AG roll. Yeah, Sweet Bunny uh, pointing out here that this dodge, still a two plus. Yeah, all right, <laughs> still, still a two plus, and the dodge gives you the free reroll. But it's not going to matter. The leap's going to work out. Doggy Teeth's going to take the lead, two to one. <laughs> Hank the Ranger makes an excellent point. Leaping is cooler. It is, by league rules, cooler. <laughs> Arendelle Icebreakers are going to find themselves on offense yet again, very likely for the last time in this game. They have three turns. They can score in three. If we get a ride at this point, it's a 50-50 shot as to whether we gain a turn or lose a turn. Two-man player advantage for Donkey Teeth. SP Beaver says next season the commissioners need to ban elves. <laughs> elves, the tough thing with elves is that they're they're always so expensive. You're going to lose elves, and they're and they are always going to cost you. Although you can get away with a couple of liz uh, lizards, <laughs> you can get away with a couple of journeymen. Probably, <laughs> but it counts. <laughs> it counts. Swell during heat. The heat has been turned up <laughs> in more ways than one. Turn 14 for the icebreakers. <laughs> they get the knockdown on the right defensive tackle. <laughs> Did I block? They get the, the knockdown on the left defensive tackle. <laughs> Two I block, they get the pal on Biscatine Trisket. They're looking for that 11, oh no, they're looking for an eight plus. Do the claw. Sweet Bunny uh, says good night all, good night. Thanks for hanging out. Sweet Dreams, sponsored by Tasty Cake. Tasty Cake, the, the official cake of dreams. Anger Ranger says fouling. Maybe there's there's four assists on the foul currently, but you would think he'd try everything in his power to try to get a draw on this game. Oh, 
Oh, I got a meeting tomorrow. Are there any games tomorrow? Let's see. Oh, there is. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Dude, I block its KO on Jr. Jr. Jr.'s Jr. It's a one man player advantage now for Donkey Teeth. Good pickup thanks to sure hands. The Duke of Wesselton. He's gonna have to move. He's gotta move forward. With three turns remaining, he's gotta book. <laughs> he's not gonna move the ball carrier. So I don't, in all likelihood, he's not gonna score. Goes for the foul. That's a seven plus foul. Didn't work out. Didn't get called off the pitch. Turn 15 for Donkey Teeth. I mean, Donkey Teeth might try to score again. <laughs> we'll see. A tree man is marking, is marking five players. <laughs> hey. Yeah, blitz one of these scoring threats. Gets a pal on Kristoff. Really hopes he, yeah, he really hopes he breaks armor here. He does not. <laughs> SB Beaver says the tree man is greatest man. <laughs> Look at this! What are you gonna do? Stop this! Yeah, Hingle McRingleberry is gonna try to apply some pressure to the ball carrier. I think we'll probably see Triple Parakeet choose move down pitch as well. And then some coverage on Oaken. Still needs to keep everybody else on defense here, though. Just just in case somebody breaks free here in this, in this little gaggle of flares. You can see Triple Parakeet Shoes did indeed advance down pitch. Yeah. Equine Ducklings. Two elves in scoring position currently. Two GFIs to mark the Duke of Wesselton. He's gonna have to dodge away. You can't blitz, because you can only you can only do a once per turn action. You can only do one once per turn action with the player. So if he blitzes, there's no pass or handoff or anything. Five elves down pitch. He's gotta be a little careful. Yeah, this this is a good call. Cutting off the Duke of Wesselton here is going to force this to be a, a significant pass. <laughs> Flood elves. <laughs> Turn 15 for the Icebreakers. They've got to get the ball in the hands of Oaken, and he's got to run. If he can run away, he can win. Oh, the one die block! So scary. Gets an injury though. Let's hope it's a good one. Well, that's a journeyman. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. He did get the SPP for the for the ca uh, the casualty though. But uh, he's got to move this ball. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. So he can do a quick pass. Another. Knocks down the tree. He can do a quick pass to Oak, and that's the best he's going to get out of this. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. Can he get a short pass out of it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two. No. Best he can do is a quick pass, so no GFIs. He can, he can score. I wonder if he, he's not seeing it. Well, not with a dodge. <laughs> Spends a reroll. Oh. 
Good effort, though. Good effort. Turn 16. Back to Donkey Teeth, and uh, I'll be very surprised if they don't pick this ball up and score. SP Beaver says, if a journeyman gets injured, do you still have to pay them? <laughs> I mean, if he's dead, just take the money right back out of his pocket. No matter who it is, it's going to be a two plus pickup. Who does he want? Who does he want to get uh, the ball? Probably Equine Ducklings, right? So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nope. It's going to be Hingle McCringleberry to level up. He's going to be a level four war dancer. Well done. Donkey Teeth increase their lead three to one. And the Icebreakers are going to have one turn left, I believe. The Icebreakers with one turn remaining. They can get on the board if there's a riot. How many players do they have left? They have seven players left on the pitch versus seven. Oh, we're playing sevens, are we? All right, cool. Oh, poor, poor. Oh, the two big guys. They just can't take the heat. They can't take the heat. I understand why the Yeti's out, but the Treeman? How many days has he been out in the blistering summer sun? Although, look at his leaves. He does look like he's dying. <laughs> it doesn't look... This, this doesn't look healthy. <laughs> Four players back by the end zone for Donkey Teeth. Three on the line because he must put at least three players on the line. One of those players is going to be Equine Ducklings, the catcher. I think the Ranger says it's just folly, but he'll be fine. <laughs> Five players on the line. The Icebreakers are going to try to block down this line. I, I think they should hope for the riot. Don't, I mean... You get another TD, you won't win the game, but every TD matters. You get SPP out of it as well. Here's the kick. Oh, <laughs> How many re-rolls have been in this game? <laughs> the Icebreakers will not be able to score. They'll get uh, three blocks on the line. They'll pass for some SPP and they'll call it a day. Probably try the pass with Kristoff. Try to level him up. Gets a KO on Swordless Mime Town, it's not going to matter. <laughs> Sick. Snoop says, watch that goblin with the magnifying glass. Brick armor again. Got a stun. Also doesn't matter. Final block on the line here. Just looking for the casualty to get some uh, get some SOP. You can get two out of it. Didn't get it. Pick up by Kristoff for a quick pass to the Duke of Busselton. Good pickup. He can stay right there if he wants. That'll be a quick pass. Good. Nope, not a good pass. He'll spend the reroll for sure. Yes, indeed. Good catch. The Duke of Westland's going to level up. Well done. And now a GG foul's in order, eh? You can get four assists on this foul. It's going to move the ball forward. What? Well, Jeff, I. Oh, no! <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Oh, fail <laughs> GFI, that's the end of the game. Three to one. Donkey Teeth's gonna win this one. Oh, at least nothing came out of that <laughs> injury.
Oh, Marshmallow the Yeti is going to be the MVP for the Arendelle Icebreakers. Quackadilly Blip is going to be the MVP for Donkey Teeth. The Arendelle Icebreakers had the ball for half the game. They just couldn't get an offense really going. They had a good, uh, good score in the first drive of the game, but uh, Elves, man. Oh, oh, I'm going to be sick. <laughs> I'm going to be sick. <laughs> 21 SVP for Donkey Teeth! <laughs> 21 SVP for Donkey Teeth, 11 for the Icebreakers. Oh, 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 oh. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Let's look at these, uh, let's look at these. Uh, everything looks just about at odds here. Take root is certainly not at odds. <laughs> that's that's way out of whack. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the schedule before we leave. All right, coming up next, we have a double header tomorrow night, uh, Tuesday, May 9th, starting at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time at CTC minus four. Uh, we'll get things started with Damage Dragons versus the Knights of Nuffle, War Horsemen versus Clypheus. That's uh, Lizards versus Bretonian. That'll be followed up at 10 o'clock by the Carnivores versus the Mighty Tiny Whiteys. Nick Satan's Kislev Circus team versus Artificial Bunnies. Uh, Norse teams. That's another Norse team. Uh, I'm looking forward to both of those games. All of the games have been scheduled this week. Uh, and when week six gets scheduled, uh, after this week, there's just two weeks left in regulation play in the Spike Magazine trophy. When week six gets scheduled, you'll be able to check out and get alerted to those schedules on our website at mammal.club. That's M-A-M-L dot C-L-U-B here on Twitch or on our social media pages on Twitter, Mastodon, and Facebook. You can listen to our podcast, Mammal Talk, and watch previous games on our YouTube channel, eat tasty cakes. They're delicious. You can also play Blood Bowl. <laughs> you can play Blood Bowl via Blood Bowl 2 and Blood Bowl 3 on Steam and in tabletop form at your friendly local game store until tomorrow night at eight o'clock PM Eastern Daylight Time. Enjoy the rest of your Monday evening, everyone. Take care.